In this video, I'm gonna take you through my top five favorite features of the SWS extension for Reaper. I've actually done a video recently on how to install the SWS extension and all the other extensions for Reaper. So I'm not gonna cover that in this video, uh, but it will be linked in the description below. And before we get into it, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'll talk about them a little bit later on. Once you have the SWS extension installed, you get this new extensions menu uh, in the main menu bar, and you get a ton of new features. Uh, we're gonna start off with probably my favorite one. I cannot work without this one, SWS auto color slash icon. This is a great way to automate things that you do on a regular basis, like coloring tracks or changing tracks to certain layouts or adding icons to tracks. And it does it all by the name of the track or by the type of track that they are. So for example, if I have a track named drum, it's going to use this color here. And I can just choose any color here and it will apply that to my project. And it'll apply that not just to this project, but every project going forward. So I've got that set up for vocal, synth, vox, drum, bass, guitar, keys, audio and video tracks, very common titles that I would have on tracks. It's already assigned a color. And once you get working with these sort of consistent colors, it really speeds up workflow. I can look at my mixer and know that this gr particular green is always my bass guitar tracks. So you can do this with tracks, with markers and regions. You can not only change the color, but you can assign an icon, a TCP layout or an MCP layout. So let me show you how you would set up this really quickly. Um, I've covered this in other videos, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth, but I will show you just briefly how you set up one. So I'm gonna click on add a rule and it puts in uh, an empty one at the bottom. So I'm gonna use the rule type for track and you can just right click to see the other options, track, marker, and region, so track. And based on the name, um, we're gonna call this brass. And I do have tracks uh, in this project here under the brass folder. So if the track is named brass, it's going to be assigned a color. You can right click in here. You can go to custom, gradient, random, none, parent, or ignore. So we're gonna to go to uh, click on set color and we're just gonna choose a color. I think probably a purpley color uh, because that's not used too much in my uh, template already. So I hit okay. And that's changed just the track named brass. But we can drag this around and make sure that is above this other rule that I have. If the track is a child track, you can see different types of tracks. Any unnamed folder children receive, master, record armed, VCA master. So if the track's named brass, it gets assigned this color and any tracks underneath it, if it's a folder, get the same color as the uh, parents. This also works with markers and regions, as I said before. And so I like to use symbols to use different colors because uh, they mean different things to me. So if I use a uh, pound sign, then I've got this color, a exclamation point is uh, this blue, an equal sign is this blue, and the same for regions. I don't use a lot of symbols in regions, but sometimes I will. And again, once you pick a color, you can easily modify that. In the options in this window, there is enable track coloring, enable marker coloring, region coloring, track icon, and track layout. So just make sure that the ones you want to use are there. So that's the auto color icon layout function. Love it. Next, we're gonna look at my second favorite, the cycle action editor. And this is taking custom actions to another level by adding in looping and steps, console commands and label processor actions. This really adds a lot of uh, great functionality to Reaper uh, without getting into custom scripting and things like that. Really easy to start prototyping a kind of advanced workflows and, uh, and it's a great way to kind of bridge the gap between Reaper's functions uh, custom scripting and whatever you need for your own workflow. So here's a cycle that I set up for cycling grid sizes. So basically one key will set the grid 
and then it will keep dividing it or uh, it'll keep going through smaller and smaller until it gets back to the start. This uses the step function and there are a ton of different types of functions in here. So there's steps, there's statements, if, if not, if, and, if, nand, if not, and, if, or, if, nor, if, x, or, if, x, or, else, and, if, loop, end, loop, console, and label. These are kind of like script functions, coding functions here. Having those available really makes this a lot more powerful. Looping, uh, just a way to repeat the actions multiple times, um, either by a preset amount or by asking you how many times to repeat it. Console is another SWS function, um, really useful for selecting tracks by name and things like that, but you can use that within a cycle action. And label is for the SWS label processor, which is item names. So you can kind of automate the process of naming items a certain way. So once you have a cycle action made, it then ends up in the action list. So I can actually launch the action list from here and I'll search for cycle grid. Actually, I haven't assigned this to anything, so I'll just assign this to shift six. And so I press shift six and it is changing the grid size. I'll just zoom in here even further. Pretty cool. So let's make another one. Let's uh, repeat X amount of times. So uh, I'm gonna just right click anywhere on the left side, go to add cycle action. It's gonna make a new one and we give it a name. I like to add in the word cycle if it's a cycle action. These appear in the action list as whatever you name them. So uh, just kind of to show that this is a custom function rather than uh, a built-in function. So let's call this cycle duplicate item X times. All right, and opening the action list here, and we're going to look for the duplicate item. With this selected, we right click in the right side of the cycle action editor and choose add selected items in the action window. I'm going to add in some other things like uh, loop. With the loop function, you put in the amount of times you want this part to loop. So loop. X will actually uh, bring up a window and ask me how many times, but you can put in something like loop 25 and we'll duplicate that item 25 times. So let's do loop X and make sure that the start of the loop uh, is at the top or whatever part you want to actually loop. All right, so we'll just save this by hitting apply and we'll go to the action list. Uh, I'm gonna select an item here so we can run this, got an item selected. I'm going to search for cycle, duplicate, duplicate item X times. There's my action. I've got an item selected, I'm going to run it. And it asks me number of times to repeat. So let's do 23 times. So a total of 24 items. And it's just going to repeat this end to end. And there we go. If I select all these, double click, it's going to show that 24 items are selected. So that's a pretty simple example of what you can do with this. There are actions that do that already, but it kind of just goes to show how simple it is to have an idea, execute it with a cycle action editor. Here's one for working on films that I created, copy selected area to track named SFX. It's gonna split the item at the time selection. It's gonna copy that item. It's going to take the original item and color it a specific color. It's going to go to the start of the time selection and run a console command, console SFX1, which means it's going to uh, look for a track named SFX1. Then it will paste that item on that track. So it's gonna take an item from this track, paste it into an item on this other track. So let me just show you what that actually looks like. I've got this uh, selection of an item here. I've got a track named FX1. Oh, the S in SFX1 here is actually S for select only this track. A lowercase s would keep the track selection you already have. So if a track is named FX1, it will find it and then continue the action. So we can actually run cycle actions from the, within the editor. We don't have to go to the action list. 
Um, but if you do go to the action list, you can assign it to toolbar buttons, keyboard shortcuts, th those sorts of things. Then you're just going to run it from here. And so that's split the item, given it a, co a unique color, then um, pasted it on another track. So this was a really helpful thing for organizing a film. So that's it for the cycle action editor. I love this thing. And uh, I highly encourage you to check this out because it's so damn powerful. And now we're gonna take a break from our lesson and talk about our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes on art, design, productivity, and more. It's one of my favorite places to go when I wanna learn something new. I like to learn through video and their project-based classes really help me. Some of my favorite classes are Make Creativity Your Career, Six Exercises to Create a Successful Side Project from Andy J Pizza, and Thomas Frank's Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last. Both of these classes have had a, a big impact in my life. First 500 people to click the link in the description will get two free months of Skillshare Premium Access. You get access to every single class on Skillshare site, plus offline access and more. If you want to continue your membership for a full year, it's about $10 a month. Really affordable, really great quality. If you are constantly learning like I am, I'm sure that you will find a good place for Skillshare in your learning journey. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The next SWS function that I want to show you is reposition selected items. This is a pretty simple one, should be pretty quick to demo this. I've got some items here that are uh, chopped up, there's spaces in between. Imagine this is uh, source sounds for a sample library. Reposition selected items action allows you to specify the length of time between each item. So with the item selected, we want to run this action. And we can set either item start or item end to a specific time interval. So let's do item end and zero, and that's gonna remove all the gaps between these items, just like that. Let's run this again and set the item starts to be two seconds. So from the left edge of each item, it's two seconds before the start of the next item. Run this again, item end of two seconds. And now from the ends of the items, it's going to be two seconds. This is a super helpful action for many things. Primarily, I see it used for sample library creation uh, because, well, it does this. And that's uh, something that would be incredibly time consuming and boring to do manually. My number four favorite function is the SWS loudness analysis. So I still have those items selected from before. I found loudness from the extensions menu. And in here, I can analyze these selected items. It takes a few seconds to process. I can see that integrated loudness is like minus 26. Um, true peak is at minus 3.6 on a lot of these but it does vary between about a, a dB. So this is really helpful if you have a bunch of tracks that you've mastered, you wanna just double check everything, or even with tracks that you've been sent to mix, you wanna uh, figure out what the levels are to begin with and how much gain to apply. So uh, loudness analysis is a great kind of quality control check and, or just, you know, just some extra information. So that's how I use the loudness analysis, but there are other options here if you click on the options button. So you can analyze items or tracks. And so if you analyze tracks, it's going to take into account the processing on the track and give you an integrated reading of all of the items, the overall over time, the length of the entire track. So not only is there loudness analysis, which is super helpful, but there's also normalizing. So we can normalize things to a standard of minus 23 LUFS or to zero LU or any other number we want. So let's say normalize loudness of selected items or tracks. Uh, do I have those items selected? Yes, I do. So I'm gonna run this and it's gonna ask me normalize items to whatever LUFS. So they were close to minus 26 before. So let's normalize them to minus 16 LUFS. It's gonna take a few minutes, second. It's gonna take a little while to run this on so many items, but there we go. We've got all of those um, normalized to the same amount. 
And you do have to be careful when you're loudness normalizing because it's gonna change the peak level as well. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind. You might also need to run a limiter after that or normalize to a lower level. We go to the extensions menu and then SWS options. We can enable marker actions. This is the last thing on my list. Marker actions are pretty cool. I don't use them a ton, but you can create some interesting workflows with this. So I'm gonna put in a marker at this position that will stop the project. So as it plays, once it hits that marker, the project stops. I'm going to look in the action list for that action to stop. That's transport stop. And it's this one right here. Right click the action, copy selected action command ID. And this will work with any action. Doesn't have to be this one. Anything you want, anything you can come up with. I'm gonna put in a marker at this position. I'm gonna do exclamation point and that command ID. If we wanna name it something here as well, so it's a little visually distinguished, uh, we can just type in stop so we know what's going to happen. If I play back this project, it's gonna hit this marker point and stop. And it stops. We can also do things like uh, go to next marker. Right here, go to mar next marker or project end. We can right click that and uh, copy command ID. And we'll just edit this. So it's going to exclamation point, paste the action ID, and then uh, go to next. All right, so when playback hits this point, it's going to jump to the next marker, which is right there. It's not gonna make sense musically, but in a project that was arranged to a grid, it would. So here we go. And so you can kind of rearrange your project in that way, at least audition things. I like to use this when I'm reamping. So I'm recording out uh, with lab guitars through an amp and I might wanna leave the room for that, but I want it to like record and stop and I don't wanna run in here and you know pay attention to it. I can just kind of sequence things up so that they stop at a certain point. And you can do, you can put in a custom action so it's, it records to that certain point, it stops, it goes to the next track, arms it, disarms any other tracks, and then and starts recording again on the next track. You can do things like that with marker actions. I've seen people using the mix snapshots function along with action markers. It wasn't in the context of music, it was like sound design stuff. And so they had different kind of effects and settings for things and they could uh, easily audition things. One thing to keep in mind with the action markers is that they don't affect rendering. So this is only during recording and playback that these make a difference. Uh, when you're rendering your project, any sorts of special functions you wanna do here aren't going to work. Regardless, I find them really helpful and, uh, and something that is kind of overlooked a lot of times. So there are my five favorite functions for the SWS extension. I consider this stuff to be essential. I cannot mix without this stuff. Um, I'm using it practically every day in every project in some way, and I love it so much. You should have it too. It's free after all. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to our sponsor, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. <laughs>